All right, so you can see one thing I wrote in the previous um, page, right, when I wrote this, was lacking. This was the standard error of our x bar, which is the s divided by the square root of n. So here's our actual formula. It's on the formula sheet. x bar plus or minus our t star, so how many, um, basically, bunny hops, but this time we're talking about a t distribution, should we go, and of course, our standard deviation is the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Um, there is, of course, this note here at the bottom. If for some reason you happen to know the true population standard deviation, you could use Z. Now, in real life, this absolutely will not happen. I used to teach the course where, like many a traditional textbook, there was either a Z interval or a T interval. Um, I've since sort of gone, why am I teaching this? Just because books have it in it when no one should ever do it. Um, so in my course, you will not see this, but it could happen in another stats course. Uh, it's very much a theoretical thing. It does not happen in real life because as I said before, in order to calculate this, you would need to have mu and that's exactly what we're making an interval for. So silly, we will never see this in our class. You might see it in old homework and old assignments and things like that because I used to do it. All right, so assumptions and conditions. Uh, we can construct confidence intervals for, ooh, look at this, copy-paste error. Mu, if the following assumptions are satisfied. Um, the sample values, again, these are all the same, right? And dependence, SRS, and no larger than 10%. But now, unlike 7.1, we have a little bit of a change. Be able to use the T distribution. Remember, if we were in 7.1, this was we needed n to be greater than or equal to 30, or to have x be approximately normal. Um, but now we actually are saying that, well, the central limit theorem is still at play, but now there's some sort of differences. And this is what I was saying previously, too, um, is that if you have something fairly symmetric, you're, you can get away with a smaller sample size. So it's essentially what we're seeing here. Um, so same idea. Uh, but now we're getting a little more nitpicky. You do need to have normality, so ways you can check a normality. You can make a histogram dot plot or sim plot to look at your sample to see what's going on. Uh, you can also make what's called a QQ plot. All your data values should fall pretty much on the diagonal line. If they don't, what you'll see, the most common thing, is that you'll start seeing the things tail off like that to either side. And that would be an indication that your data is not normal and that you need a larger sample size to be able to handle uh, this particular type of uh, inference. So anyways, assumptions. So let's do an exercise where we actually create a confidence interval. So suppose a random sample of 10 teenagers. Here we go, we got our N found that the average amount of time, I don't like how many like squiggles are hanging off of everything, n is equal to 10, found the average amount of time they spend on the internet each day is 3.2 hours. So this is an average. And it's an average from our random survey. So this 3.2, that's an x bar. It's not a real uh, true mean. It's a sample mean. And with a sample standard deviation, of 0 0.78, so they've given us an S. So what assumptions must be made in order for a confidence interval to be valid? So just as a note, by the way, it's been a while since I mentioned this, but in this case, our variable of interest is the amount of time these people spend online each day, which is quantitative. So remember, part seven is all about quantitative data and part six is all about categorical data. So what assumptions must be made? Well, if we're making a, a confidence interval for mu, then we have those four assumptions. One, independence. Two, we need a simple random sample. Three, we need n to be less than 10% of the population. And four, we have all those crazy rules about our sample has to be large enough. Our rule of thumb, right? So let's just check through these, even though it doesn't say to. So first off, independence. Well, we have a random survey. 
So we have our SRS, and with an SRS, we buy ourselves independence because there's no reason one randomly surveyed teenager would influence the next randomly surveyed uh, teenager. N is less than 10% of the population. Well, 10 teenagers is definitely less than 10% of all teenagers. So we can go ahead and say, sure enough, we got three. Four, though, says our sample must be large enough, and our N is equal to 10, which our large enough was 15 if we had symmetric data, symmetric data, 30 if we didn't have symmetric data. So we definitely are failing here. So we're going to bring in that or our original distribution had to be approximately normal. So the question is, is the amount of time a teen spends online, would that be normally distributed? So really what we'd want to do is look at these 10 data values, make a dot plot, make a, his, uh, or a QQ plot and see what's happening. Um, without that information, I actually think this is, there's no way this would happen. I believe that the amount of time a teenager spends online would be right skewed. Um, the reason I would say right skewed is because zero is a lower bound, but there are teenagers who probably spend 14, 15 hours. Some, maybe not 14, that's insane. But some a really large amount of time online, and um, they're going to have that right tail, whereas zero is the least, and we're going to butt up against that. So this looks a little sad. It looks like maybe we don't have all of our conditions. Uh, the second question here says, what are our point estimate and standard error of the population average amount of time uh, teenagers spend online each day? So our point estimate is, right, a way to estimate our average. Before that was p hat. Now this is x bar. We're estimating the population average. So our x bar, well, that's just 3.2 if I had to guess. And then the standard error this should actually say the standard error of that x bar, not of the population average. This is just our s divided by the square root of n. Remember, standard deviation is going to be sigma divided by the square root of n. If we're talking about standard error, it's basically an estimate of that standard deviation. So we're going to use s instead. So this will be our 0 0.78 divided by the square root of 10. And I'm going to be lazy here and not calculate that. So this is a silly question. This wouldn't happen on the test. But the next one definitely would. Assuming the necessary conditions are met. So they're basically saying, let's hand wave number four and just say, yeah, sure, it's normally distributed. Calculate a 98% confidence interval for the average amount of time a teenager spends online. So formula sheet. We want to make a confidence interval. We want to do that for a mean or an average, right? And we're never going to use this row. This is old and antiquated. We're only going to use this row where we don't have the, uh, sigma because there's no way to have sigma. So we're going to use this formula. X bar plus or minus T star times S divided by square root of N. So let's plug and chug. We know our x bar is 3.2. Our t star, oh crap, we need to go get that, right? So in order to get our t star, remember we're going to need our confidence level, and we're also going to need a degree of freedom, which is our n minus 1. So 9 and 98, let's go get it. Okay, degree of freedom is 9. We want a 98% confidence interval. 2.821. 2.821. And then our S divided by our square root of N. And if you're doing this by hand, right, with a little calculator, just like before, ooh, did not like that. I recommend calculating your margin of error first. So let's just do that thing. So 2.821 times 0.78 divided by, oops, 
the square root of 10. 0.6958. Oops. We're going to add or subtract that to 3.2. So 3.2 minus that business. And 3.2 plus that business. Uh, 389.58. And if you have a graphing calculator, hopefully you thought about this as I was doing it. If there was a shortcut to do the proportions, right, one prop z interval, there's probably a shortcut to do the means. And this is going to be called a t interval. So you could at the very beginning, let me go back to the thing first. Boop, boop, boop. We could have gone to stat over to test, pass t test all the way to t interval. Make sure your calculator has stats highlighted, otherwise it'll say it'll just ask you about L1 and L2. So if you have stats highlighted, it'll ask you for each of the pieces. Our x bar was 3.2. Sx, it doesn't want the standard error, it wants the actual original s, so original standard deviation. So 0.78, it's going to do all that calculation for us. N is 10, and our confidence level is 0.98. So we get out the same confidence interval. You can see slightly different in that 10,000 spot, uh, usually because the calculator is just more accurate than what we can do with our table. All right, last piece here is interpreting that confidence. Oh, no. Oh, no. Did I, I closed it. Tragic. Tragic. Riveting YouTube watching right now, waiting for my application to open. I paused it and saved you from like another minute of that crap. Anyways, um, last piece here. I'm sorry this video is so long. We're going to interpret that interval. So that's always our sentence, right? So we are 98% confident. that the true population and here's where things are going to change we're no longer talking about proportions right so you want to use either the word average or mean and of course you can always steal the wording of the question stem right population average amount of time 18 spends online Instead of writing spins on the internet, I'm lazy. Online is between 2.5042 and 3.8958. And you better believe I'm going to want some units. So your big difference here is we're using, oops, that is not what I meant to do. We're using the word average or mean, and then we're putting units in there. Those are the big two. Now, if for some reason you're kind of lazy and you just write is contained within the interval, you better have units on your interval. So there's got to be units in one of the two places that I know what the heck we're talking about.